Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Kiwis and newbies. I am Sunshine. This is the ABQ Method for Solving Rubik's Cubes. I'm the ABQ Tutor. Welcome to my channel. And today, okay, what is ABQ? Formula A is four moves. Formula B is eight moves. Uh, it's it's not an algorithm because I don't specify which columns and rows you're moving, uh, which an algorithm does. Uh, one formula A is is four moves, one row, one column. If it's the bottom row and the right column, then it has the effect of moving these, switching these two corners, and a bunch of other stuff. You can do it and find out. However, if a multiple of six gets you back to your beginning, so uh, so. You can switch the, the as these two switch, they twist as they go along. So if twisting the corner, if it's if it's where you want it to be, but you want it to be twisted, then you would just slide it out of the way to preserve it and continue with your six set on another piece that you don't care if it twists. And <clears throat> so if you have two corners that are in the right place but want to be twisted, formula A is what to do. If you want to bring a piece to the top, formula A is what you do. So, you just uh, hold the cube that you want to twist in the top front right position. Formula A flips it back and forth when it's where you want it to be. Simply slide it and and put it until there's another cube that you also want to follow through on. Also, want, you don't care if you can twist that one and you twist two cubes at the same time. You can't ever twist just one cube. Okay, so that's formula A. If it's the middle row and middle column, out, down, in, up, you end up with boxes. Uh, the way to undo it is just the three corners that you want to, the three corners that you want to flip are top, front, right, like so. Um, and you can either do it, uh, so out, down, in, up again you're, you're taking the piece that wants to, to move up here and you go out move it away from the action move the space down move the piece into the space and the piece in space back up again so that's formula a uh, you can do it works on the absolute center works on the corners you can do it with the entire first face but formula a does affect uh, all six sides at the same time so you can't it, it's not useful for the rest for the the, the other five faces of the cube Formula B moves three pieces around, top row, two columns, and if if the two columns are the outside columns, up, up, down, down, every other move is horizontal, every other horizontal is a reversal one before it, and if you'd use the outside columns, the three columns you move, three corners you move, three pieces you move are corners, okay? Uh, once has the effect of going clockwise, twice has the effect of going counterclockwise and three times puts it back to the way it was. Uh, these two pieces move in connection with each other over to here and then this piece will go over there which has the effect of exchanging just these two which you can never move two, you always move three. Uh, so top outside columns is corners, outside inside column same thing, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down and the three pieces move. The three pieces, the, the two columns, you don't have to memorize which two columns do what things. You just have to select a piece to place. And the first column is where it's going to land. The second column is where it begins. So again, you just make sure the corners match the front, determine the direction it's going. And this will go here. And this one will come forward. And this one will go back there. So up, up, down, down. On a larger cube <clears throat> for when you if the two cube if the two columns you use are both centers then center pieces move around and the corners and edges stay the same so you find a piece that's in the that's on the front face that you want to move line it up like rotate the top face until it's lined up so where it'll it'll land and then you go up move it up slide into a separate column that you follow the cube that you're moving and it dictates what the two piece what the two columns are 
So you don't have to remember, you just have to pick a piece that's wrong and throw it in the right direction you want it to be, and the cube takes care of the rest. So formula A, four moves, formula B, eight moves. With that, you can solve every complexity Rubik's Cube, every complexity Minx. The difference between this and this is that this one you can get a parody on, but parodies are a lie, don't worry about them. You don't have to play with them unless you want to. Uh, this one has, no, but but uh, no order of operations. Go whatever la layer by layer, top to bottom, inside out, doesn't matter. Uh, but this one has an order of operations. You want to do the star pieces first because if one of your two columns is the center, you'll have ancillary movements. So order of operations: star first, then non-star pieces, and uh, any order you want to. I do corners first because. Uh, back in the 80s, we worked around the absolute center because the absolute center doesn't move. Uh, that stopped being necessary or <laughs> once we came up with the 4x4, but uh, we never we never fixed that. So, I'd, corners can only be correct to each other in one way, and then you put, you put the edges in between the corners, and then the if, if there's a parity, it's going to show up on corners or edges. Uh, parity is where there's two pieces and only two pieces that want to s exchange. Uh, you always moving three pieces around. So the third piece that you don't see is the piece you don't see, meaning that it is the inner slice that touches the parity that you have. If you move that inner slice one quarter turn, your parity disappears. You never have to memorize any parity algorithms regardless of what the parity looks like. <clears throat> and that's the overview. <laughs> so again, good morning. Who, who have, oh, I see a couple of... How are we all doing this morning? Everybody happy? Everybody happy? We made it to Friday. <laughs> okay. Um, I I'm I have I have pre I prepared some of my cubes for potential questions. Um, I have several parodies lined up. I have actually I have several of the same parody lined up. If anyone wants to talk about parodies, these are all the same, the same parody. It's a corner parody. Um, so I have some parodies lined up if we want to answer that. And I have some filaminxes. I have everything but the last layer done, if anyone wants to know how to do the last layer. Because much of the, much of the minx can be solved. More, more of the minx is solved with formula A than with formula B. No, more of the formula A solves more of the minks than it does on the cube. That's what I meant to say. So, um, with for the for for the cube, formula A is really only the absolute center and the corners and possibly the first face, and everything else is B except for twisting of the corners. Uh, on this cube, you can do anything with formula B. Everything except for twisting the corners is done with formula B. However, formula A work does a lot on the minks as well. Um, if you're going, if you want to, the thing that's the, you can do the entire, uh, the, all the, uh, not the whole face, but the entire center of the white and the bolds and the star parts only of the pastels. Yeah, that's how far you can get with using just formula A on the minks. Or you can just uh, use formula B for most of them. But, uh, so, you can get all the, if you're doing this, you can get the centers for the white and the bolds and the star parts for the pastels and the gray. And that's how far you can get with formula A. Uh, or you can, because formula A is four moves and formula B is eight moves, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit faster for, 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 for if you're timing yourself. So, when I teach the cube, if anyone has any questions or comments, please feel free to drop to, to drop them in the chat, because <laughs> there's a reason I'm here. Uh, when I teach the cube, and I do teach the cube, I'm actually, oh you guys, this is fun, um, I'm actually going to start teaching the cube, uh, teaching a course in, this, in, the, in the ABQ method down at my local uh, senior center. <clears throat> I said... Uh, I can teach every complexity Rubik's cube inside of two hours. They said, "Can you stretch it into nine hours?" Because we've got nine week session, nine week courses, an hour, an hour a week. And I'm like, "Absolutely, <laughs> I can do that." So, uh, when I teach the cube, 
uh, I don't teach just the three by three because uh, there's I run into mental walls uh, when I t start with a three by three. <clears throat> so I teach all of them at the same time. I do the corners first, and then the edges, and then the edges, and then lastly the centers. But all of them are used. So all of all of these are solved using just for formula A and formula B. So there, you don't. Not only do you not have to memorize um, d many algorithms, but when you with algorithms, what I found is that you first you have to memorize what the algorithm is mentally uh, or with you with muscle memory, and then you have to remember which move, which algorithm does which things because each algorithm does a different thing and then you have to remember which order to use which algorithms because this one will do this but mess up the other one and so it's there's just a lot to remember and uh, when I teach it like I said I teach it inside of two hours two one hour sessions uh, and I teach them all at the same time so the first session first hour would just be basic would just be the corners uh, I <laughs> <clears throat> first thing to do, let's mess these up while I'm talking. Uh, first thing to do, uh, every no matter which cube you have, every cube has eight corners. So, and I am set up to teach in real time. I have got a Zoom classroom. So if anyone wants to help me demonstrate, or if you have a non-humor friend who wants to learn, uh, message me. We can set that up. That would be fun for me. So, uh, but whatever cube you have, every cube has eight corners. So regardless of, I can, teach, I can teach this person on a 2x2 two two and this person on a 5x5 five five at the same time because the corners are done the exact same way regardless of how happy your cube is. Okay. So when you get the corners done, then the 2x2 two two is solved. The next complexity up, the, ne the next, so, so the 2x2 two two is then solved. And within every other cube, uh, you've got the absolute center and you've got the uh, the side edges, the edges. And every edge piece is placed the same way regardless of whether it's the absolute, abs the, the center edge or the, 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 uh, the uh, side edges. The, the edges are all done the same way. So, and so I start with the corners and then we do the edges and then we do the centers. When I'm teaching, I just, <laughs> we start with, <laughs> well, the first step of corners is to bring yellow to the top. I, I start with yellow. You can be color neutral. But I bet when I was setting this up, uh, all of my alpha testers said, tell me which color to use. So I did. Yellow is convenient for, for me because uh, not all cubes are color, standardized colors, but, but uh, they all have a yellow. Uh, this for, when you have my, my here's my Whit Eden three by nine. Uh, yellow is one of the it, it, it's convenient to to have yellow. So <clears throat> yellow is usually opposite white, but this one doesn't have a white. It has purple and red is opposite yellow. So it's red. Yellow is just the easier the, the easier standard to start with on these cubes. So first thing is to bring yellow the yellow corners to the top, and then you're going to check the sides to see whether they're positioned correctly. And if they're if, if so, A brings yellow to the top. B moves three pieces around if you need to, and then A will bring the yellow back to the top again. So <clears throat> when I'm teaching, we'll we'll bring the yellows to the top, and I'll say, "Great, now do it on this cube. Good, now do it on this cube. Great, now scramble it and try it again." And so I get everybody good and comfortable with formula A and what it does uh, to the corners <clears throat> before I move on to formula B. And then once I move on to formula B. There's a couple formula A's left, but then formula B covers everything else that you've got. So we'll spend the first <clears throat> half an hour or so working, doing just formula A on the corners, and then I'll bring in formula B. And w so we get once we've got the corners really done, I said then I'll, I'll send them home with a, a big cube, <clears throat> and I'll say, oh, by the way, formula B is two columns, but if you change which columns you're using instead of just using the outside ones then different things happen. So play with that and see what happens. Um, and then they will come back in a week and they will all <laughs> they will all say, I have a question. And because if, if, it, if it worked right, then they would scramble it and do it again. But if it, if it get to where they don't know what to do next, then they bring it in. And because formula A and B are so simple, 
uh, when they come back with their question, I know what that question is. Invariably, if it's a 3 by 3, their question is, be because we have told them the formula B moves three pieces around, uh, if they'll come back with two pieces, and it will be two pieces in the correct place but flipped, because that's the only way you can have two pieces out of uh, not correct. Uh, on a cube, on a 3x3, three three, is if they're in the right place but not flipped. So if they have 3x3, three three, their question is those those last two pieces that need to flip. If they have a two by, if they have a larger cube, their question is there's a parity. And because I didn't really go over parities for the, in the first hour. And so when they come back, for, so for them I will demonstrate that, that uh, there's always three pieces, there's always three pieces to move. Uh, and if you don't see one, if, if you only see two, the, the piece that you don't see is the center piece that, you, that is touching your parity. So you move that a quarter turn, and then resolve your edges, and the parity's gone. <laughs> and after those, after those two sessions, people, they walk away with any size cube, and they know that they can pick up any size cube, any cube in any state of solve, and put it down, put it down, any state of scramble, and put it down solved. Which is fun because even the last, you know, <laughs> all right, enough talk. So, anyone have any questions before I begin? I'm going to do, all right, so pick a, pick a cube, any cube, and find, find your cube has eight corners, uh, pick a corner, and your corner, that corner has three colors, pick a color, and like I said, we're using starting with yellow. So, hold the cube in both of your hands so that your left thumb is on top of the piece that you've chosen and your chosen color is on top. Now, uh, that, the cube that you've chosen is correct. We're going to make all the rest of the cube match it because you're that powerful. So, and I just went to blank face. Okay, so you're going to look at the front of your cube as if it's a spreadsheet with rows and columns. And looking at formula A and formula B, the arrow represents the single column, the single slice that you're going to be moving at a time, and the arrow represents the rest of the cube. So if you only if you have a two by two, it's easy to see that which arrow this is. This is the bottom. This is the right. Uh, but you can change. You can apply those arrows depending on what piece you're trying to move. So we're starting with the we're starting with the yellows. We're starting with the corners. So this is correct. So I look under, look at the cube under my right thumb, and I have to assess whether there's a yellow somewhere on this cubie. On, on this cubie, if there is, formula A, bottom row, right column, is going to bring it to the top face, and that's what we want to do. We want to bring it to the top face. If there isn't, then we look at the cubie underneath it, and we see is there a yellow somewhere on this cube. If there's a yellow, these two pieces are going to switch back and forth and twist. So if there's a yellow here or here, either one. Formula A will bring it to the top. If you don't have a yellow here or here, then you'd slide the bottom row quarter turn until the answer is yes. So, as long as there's a yellow in these two places. Bottom row, right column. Uh, this piece is going to come up here, so we start by moving it away from the action. So we move it out. It's going to land here, so we move the space down. We move the cube into the space, and the cube and the space back up. So, is yellow on top? No, so we do it again. Out, down, in, up, and we keep doing it until the yellow is on top. When the yellow is on top, slide it out of the way to protect it, and we're going to continue with this corner. As long as there's a yellow in one of these two corners, it'll bring it up. Now, obviously, you can muscle things into place when you're first beginning, but if you, but formula A or B moves the piece that you want to move without changing the rest of the cube. So when the yellow is on top, slide it out of the way. Don't rotate the cube. Keep the cube stable. And then, is there yellow here or here? And the answer is no. So we rotate the bottom until there's the answer is yes. Because there's got to be a yellow. So there's, by nature of the cube, there's four corners. If you can't find one, you got it's there somewhere. So this piece is going to come up here. And again, you can't just muscle it because that upsets the rest of it. But out, down, in, up. And our yellow is on top on all four corners. Okay, let's do that again. Find a yellow. If one of the one of these two has a yellow, so formula A will bring it to the top. Slide the top to protect it, and continue with this corner. There's a yellow here or here, so formula A will bring it to the top. 
it will be five or less less than six times because six gets you back to start okay slide when it hold the cube stable slide the yellow out of the way and there's no yellow here or here so keeping the cube stable I rotate the bottom row by quarter turns until there is a yellow there and then out down in up okay so yellow is on top on yellows on top on these let's do it for this one okay uh, there's no yellow here there's a yellow here so again bottom row right column and the we are ignoring everything but our corners we're ignoring everything but the yellows okay when the yellow is on top hold the cube stable slide it out of the way uh, do you have to hold the cube stable for the first four? No, but be, but we do the sec first and second four the exact same way. So I'm only teaching you one way. So there's a yellow here or here. Out, down, in, up. Out, down, in, up. Out, down, in, up. Out, down, in, up. Rotate the top to protect this. Keep the cube stable. Continue on this one. Out, down, in, up, out, down, in, up. Now I'm not just taking one sol one scramble and going through because uh, I found <laughs> when I was learning off of YouTube videos uh, that if my cube didn't look like yours, you're moving ahead before I'm ready for it. So let's see. All right, so here, here's a yellow corner. There's a yellow here and here. Um, because I'm starting out, I'm just going to muscle it into place. So there's yellow on top, slide it out of the way to protect it. There's yellow on top, slide it out of the way to protect it. There's no yellow here, but there's one here. So out, down, in, up. Now I have the yellow on top on all four corners. Now when you get to this position... Good morning, if you've just joined me, I'm Sunshine. Uh, I'm the creator of the ABQ method for solving Rubik's Cubes. Four moves, eight moves, that's all you need to solve every complexity Rubik's Cube including the fun ones. Ta-da! Uh, it also works on every complexity mix. J uh, formula A is four moves, formula B is eight moves. Uh, a brings a piece to the top, B moves three pieces around, and that's all you ever need to do. Now when you have your yellow corners on top, uh, one of three things has happened, and you just you have to assess which one that is. So either, with the yellow on top, either all of this, now we're going to, your corners have three colors, we're going to look at the other two corners, two colors of your, your corners, and we're going to see if they match to each other. Now, at this point in time, either all of the sides will match to each other, or none of them will, or one of them will. All of them, none, or one. You can't have two uh, because of the nature of how the, how the cubes are. Unless you peel off stickers, don't peel off stickers. <laughs> don't peel off stickers. <sighs> that was... The way it was solved back in the 80s, I would walk down the street with a cube in my hand and people would, strangers would stop me and say, oh, did you take it apart or did you peel the stickers off? And I said, no, I just twisted it. They said, no, you did it. You can't twist it. Because <laughs> and they would invariably take my cube from me, twist it up and say, oh, you'll never get this one because they, they think you have to reverse what they did, which is not really happened. So I would have to solve the cube in front of them so them to believe that I'd actually solved it. So let's look at the corners. So here we have yellows on top, orange equals orange, blue equals blue, red equals red, green equals green. All four of these corners match. So this one is ready for the next step. This one, orange does not equal blue, but red equals red, green does not equal orange, and blue does not equal green. So one side matches, okay, we're going to put it, okay, this one. Uh, also has one side that matches, and this one has none side that matches, zero sides that match. So we have all three states represented that can happen here. Uh, if all four sides match, just pause and wait for everyone to catch up. If one side matches, then the, for, the, for the other ones, whether the no sides match or one sides match, we're going to do the same set, same, met, same formula next. Uh, but and if there's no sides that match it doesn't matter how you hold the cube to begin with but if one side matches you have to hold the cube so that the match set is away from you okay so this one we've paused these ones uh, if if no side if one side matches then we face it away from you we're going to do for this next step we're going to formula B which is going to move three pieces around 
and formula A, which is going to bring your yellows back to the top. So, top row, two columns, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, okay? Uh, now, it looks like we've messed up our yellows, but we haven't. They're all, they all moved, these three moved, but we already know how to bring the yellow to the top, so we're not concerned. So we go back into formula A to bring the yellow to the top. When the yellow is on top, slide the top to protect it. Keep the rest of the cube stable. Out, down, in, up. Out, down, in, up. Slide. Out, down, in, up. Out, down, in, up. Okay. Now, you will always, doing formula B and then A to bring the yellow colors back to the top will always advance your cube to the next state. So, so if you, none of them were solved, you'll now have one side solved. If one side is solved, you'll now have all sides solved like this. Okay. Um, again, if there's one side matching, it goes faces away from you. If none of them matches, it doesn't matter which way you hold it. But it's the same thing. Either way, you're doing formula B. So, so, so slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. One row, two columns. Okay. The and then it looks like we messed up, but we haven't. We got to trust the trust the cube. And so formula A to bring the yellow back to the top again. Up, down, in, up. When it's on top, hold the cube stable, slide that piece out of the way, and continue with your next corner. Slide. Up. Up. Yellow's on top on all four sides. Um, and so now, where before we had none matching, now we have the orange side matches, the other three do not. So that's the piece. So you, as if you're in a car, these are headlights you're driving forward. So uh, again, same thing. Top, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. Uh, every other move is horizontal. Every other horizontal is the reverse of the one before it. And for every up, there's a down. And so we have we slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. Okay, and then we already know how to bring the yellow back to the top. Is formula A. Slide to protect it. Keep going. Slide. Up, down and up until the yellow is on top. <coughs> okay. Uh, one side matches. Faces away. We're going to do B and then A to bring the yellow back to the top. So slide up, slide up. Slide down, slide down, and then right into formula A to bring your corners back. To the slide, slide it out of the way. Keep the cube stable. Do 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 do. Slide. And so that's the first step. Is the first four corners we've got. We've got yellow to the top. We moved three around as needed. We brought yellow to the top again, and now the corners are correct to each other. And uh, at this point in time, there's more than four corners. We do the second four corners the exact same way. We take our yellow yellow corners, put them face down. We're, we're abandoning them because we trust them to take care of themselves. And now we're going to do the second four corners the exact same way we did the first four corners. So I didn't. I, I we could have taken shortcuts on the first one, but then I'd have to. You'd have to learn more. You'd have to know when when you can take a shortcut and when you can't take a shortcut. And you will get there. But this method is for non-cubers. Um, that doesn't <laughs> doesn't mean you stay in. <laughs> I have had uh, several students who uh, once they once they learned the basics they figured oh I can do this this is not I thought this was going to be just complicated it is not I can do this and then they go into speed solving and leave me in the dust and that is as it should be and very happy so yellows are face down we're abandoning them uh, the first thing to do is to, to figure out which color is opposite yellow now if you're a cuber and your cube is standardized color you know it's white but uh, if you don't know, then you have to look at each four corners and find out which color they all have in common. Because every, so, and it is white, but it, if you have trouble discovering that, your clue, your clue is uh, that it's not any color that touches the yellow. So it's not green or red or blue or orange. So we've established that it's white. The next step, is, the first thing to do is bring your active color to the top. And 
uh, we already we already we don't have to check whether it's there on the, the bottom because we already know that it is. Now here's the thing: we said we we're going to abandon the yellows, and we are, um, which means that uh, that we're not going to look at the yellows again until the white is on top on all four corners. If we do, then we're going to think we messed up and start over again, which is fine. If you want to practice, that's just more <laughs> than fine. <laughs> But, so we're going to ignore the yellow. We'll see it dancing around, but we're going to pretend that we don't. Uh, and when, when the white's on top on all four corners, then we'll check our yellow and we'll see that unless we rotated the cube, the yellows are going to have reset themselves. So if, see this one, all of these have a white on top. You won't always have a white on top. If you do, you can you can start you have select that as your starting place. But if you don't have a white on top, it doesn't matter. You're just going to start with the um, the QB under your left under your right thumb. So formula A is going to bring the white piece to the top, out, down, in, up, and we're just going to keep doing it until the white is on the top face. Okay, it's already on the top layer. When it's on the top face, pause. Uh, slide the top, slide this, the cube that's correct, sl rotate, keep the cube stable, but slide this piece away to protect it and continue with another piece that wants to be twisted. And more out, out, formula A. And because of the mathematics of the cube, it will be a multiple of six times. You don't have to know that, but the cube knows that. And anytime you do A in a multiple of six, you're back to however you started. So now that the white's on top, we look down, and yes, our yellows are still happy. We saw them dancing around, but we're ignoring them. So white's on top. Let's do it again. Um, yellows are face down. We've abandoned them because we trust them. So white, bottom row, right column until the white's on top. And yes, you can do the inverse of A, you can do other things. Um, this is not a speed-solving method. This is not a fewest moves method. But this, it, you can learn this. This method can be learned inside of two hours. Uh, and it works on every complexity cube. So instead of learning how to do a 3 by 3 and then learning more algorithms and then to make, make a 4 by 4 look like a 3 by 3 and then treating it like a 3 by 3 and then more algorithms to, you know, uh, just once you start, all of the cubes are solved the same way. Formula A, formula B does it all, so you don't have to keep adding more complexity cubes. So people will say, oh, is that one harder than a 3 by 3 And I'll say, no, it's exactly the same, because it is. So white's on top, hold the cube stable, slide it out of the way, and continue on another corner. And I keep doing formula A, the same orientation, same bottom row, right column, until the white is on top on all four corners. Okay, slide it out of the way, keep going. Again, I can see that my yellow is misbehaving, but I'm not. But I'm ignoring it. If I look, stop and look at it now, I say, oh, I messed up my yellows, so I have to start over again, which is fine if you want practice, but you don't have to start over again because formula A and formula B never messes up what you've already done. Okay, white's on top, and we look, yep, yellow is still happy to itself. Okay, white's on top. Continue. Uh, out, down, in, up. Out, down, in, up. Multiple of two will bring the white to the top. Slide the top, keep the cube stable. And formula A does not mess up, does not affect the rest of the cube as long as it's done in multiples of six, which, because of the nature of the cube, is what's going to happen. As long as you haven't peeled stickers off. Okay, so when the white's on top, the yellows are indeed still happy with each other. Okay, and once more, formula A to bring our whites to the top. Out, down, in, up. When it's on top, slide it out of the way. Keep the cube stable, though. And once white's on top, 
just as with the yellow, it's exactly the same. Uh, one of three things just happened. Either the sides of the corners match themselves, all of them match, none of them match, or one of them matches. So this one, all of them match. Okay. All that so that so the first four corners are correct to each other, the second four corners are correct to each other. All that's left is to rotate the top until the top and bottom corners match to each other, and boom, this one's done. Okay, so this one, all of them matched. This one, uh, blue does not equal green, orange does not equal green, the red side matches. So one side matches here, here, orange does not equal green, orange does not equal red, green does not equal red, but blue equals blue, so this one has one side that matches. And this one, blue equals blue, orange equals orange, green equals green, they all match. Okay, so either they all match, none of them match, or one of them matches. Uh, most of the time, one side will match. All of them matching and none of them matching happens about the same frequency of time. Good morning. If you've just joined me, I'm Sunshine. Thank you for joining me. We're doing corners today. Our yellows are done and our whites. We're working on, uh, we've brought our whites to the top. Now we're checking to see um, if, they, if they need to be, three of them need to be moved around. And they do. So the matching pieces, the matching sides of the corners faces away from you. And we're going to do formula B and then A to bring your whites back to the top again. Now what's going to happen, these, these three cubes are, are going to move clockwise. So the, this one, these two are move in relation to each other and this one is going to move over here which has the effect of these staying the same and these two switching. But you're never moving, you're never switching two pieces, you're always moving three. So slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. And formula B did not mess up our, our yellows. It doesn't mess up anything except for what wants to move. And then formula A to bring the piece back to the top again. And we're ignoring our yellows, even though we can see them dancing around. We're keeping the cube stable. And we're just bringing the whites to the top. And when the white is to the top again, now the sides will match, to, will match because you've progressed one stage. So the yellows are still happy to each other. The whites are now happy to each other. And all that's left is to rotate the top row until the top and bottom match to each other. And now the corners are done. Boom. Okay, so these ones are done. These ones are done. One more. Okay, matching, fa matching the headlights face away from you. Formula B, top row, outside columns. Up, up, down, down, and formula A to bring the pieces back to the top. When the white's on the top, we look. The yellows are still happy, and the whites have progressed to the next phase. So the yellows are so the whites are happy to, are correct to each other. All that matters is bringing the rotating the top row until the top and bottom match. And the corners are correct on all of these cubes. Okay, on the two by two, that's all there is to it. We're done. On the rest of these, uh, we we <laughs> we do what's necessary to solve the next simplest cube, and we do that on all, for all of our cubes. So. Um, I usually, like I said, at this point in time, I would send them home with a cube and say, come back in a week and um, they will practice. But, uh, so we've done the corners. The next thing to do is to, is going to be, we, we want to set the absolute center where it wants to be, okay? If we have an absolute center. We don't always have an absolute center. So we set the absolute center because we can. If we don't do it now, we can do it later and it's no big deal. So, um, for the next thing to do, so the absolute center is correct, the only thing left to do is the edges. So, uh, I've been training my eyes to look for yellow and white. I'm going to continue looking for yellow and white. So, first thing I'm going to do is opposite edges because we've established, okay, well, actually, we, was, we haven't established this yet. So, with yellow and white left and right, find a piece in the middle that has a yellow or white, okay? Uh, if it is, we want our, the active color to be on top. So uh, if it's in front, we flip the cube, but yellow and white are still left and right in one orientation or the other. And then I'm just going to demonstrate real quickly uh, 
So um, cor bring the corners to match the front. We're treating the corners as one piece now because we've, we've set them up, so we're going to keep, to keep them together. So bring the corners to match the front color. Uh, this, the red and the white cube is going to land above the red and white something corner, not the red and yellow something corner. So it's going in this direction. Okay. Uh, let me find a piece that's going in the other direction so I can demonstrate. Yellow and white are left and right. Okay. Bring the, I'm dealing with this piece right here. Oh, so can, okay. Bring the corners to match the front. And this cube, orange and white, wants to go up this way. So this cube is going to go into the left side. This cube is going to go to the right side. Okay. So here's where there's, okay, so formula B, top row, two columns. The outside columns moved corners, but so we're going to move, but uh, the, what we need to move now, what we want to move now is an edge piece. So the, we let the cube dictate for us which pieces we're going to, uh, which columns we're going to use. So for example, for this piece right now, it's orange and white, okay? Uh, it, the, one of the two columns is going to be the column that has the piece I'm working on, and the other of the two columns is going to be wherever I want this piece to land. So since I want it to land over on, on this column somewhere, so this is my first column and this is my second column, and I ignore the other rest of the cube. Okay, so so this one's going to land here. It's B as written, top row away, first column up, top row back, second column up, reverse, down, reverse, down, and this piece was placed here. Okay, so if it's going to the right, it's that way. If it's going to the left, it's the same thing, only mirrored. So uh, th this is our second column where it is, and this is our first column is where it's going to land. Start by moving away from the action. Okay, away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down, and there it landed where we wanted it to be. Uh, so... I am not going to do all of my edges now. I just wanted to demonstrate that that's what you do. So yellow and white, left and right. Uh, in anything that's yellow or white in the middle gets placed to the left or to the right. And once the when there's no more yellow or white in the middle, you will check to see whether everything's correct. Either it will be, most often, or sometimes you'll have some, something. Uh, this piece, for example, is on the yellow side, but on the yellow root column, but it's faced, it's, it's incorrect. So in the, that case, you'd find a piece that, that does not have yellow on it, displace it into here, which brings this piece to the middle where you can work on it again. So slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down, and that puts it in the middle. So uh, opposite edges, then white down, and then displace a yellow to get the sides done. Uh, and I will do more of that this evening when I come back. But the centers are, the, are still formula B. You find a piece that wants to go and find a piece that's not right. This is the green side, this is the yellow piece. So I'm going to move it to the top. So I hold the cube so that the yellow is on top. And then the two columns, the cube dictates what the columns are. It's not the, col not the outside columns anymore because that's the corners and edges. So I follow this piece. To, t to see what my columns are. This will tell me. You don't have to memorize which columns do what. You just have to follow the piece. So it goes up, rotate the top so it's in a different column, and that column that it landed in is my second column up. Reverse down, reverse down, and there it is. So formula A brings piece to the top. Formula B moves three pieces around, and <laughs> that's all you need. I will finish these off when I come back this, after, this evening. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you guys being here. Go have a wonderful day. Be nice to yourself. Drink lots of water and have fun. And I'll be back this evening. Anyone want to say bye before I leave? I've got about three seconds. All right, you guys. Go, be, go, go have fun. Bye.